Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over my Hoda leveling build. So first off, this is a Codex of Power build, meaning all of the legendary aspects that I am using here you can get out of the Codex of Power. All you have to do is go and complete a dungeon, it'll be put into your Codex, and then you can turn a rare into a legendary. Uh, this can be used for leveling alts or on your first campaign, however keep in mind it might take you a little bit to get to the dungeons because, you know, obviously they're all over the world. So you may not be able to use this exact build right off the bat but it is something you can work towards if you are having trouble. That being said, let's go ahead and hop on into it. So first off we have Aspect of Might. Basic skills grant 20% damage reduction. We have Aspect of Disobedience. You get a stacking armor buff that goes up to 25%. We have Aspect of the Expectant. Attacking enemies with the basic skill is going to increase the damage of your next core skill by up to 30% and it stacks 5% at a time. We have Aspect of Tempering Blows after swapping weapons six times, gain 46 Fortify. We have a Looting Aspect, Becoming Injured while Crowd Controlled, grants you Unstoppable for four seconds. This one's particularly cool, so if you get Chain CC'd, it'll break you out before you die. Well, I guess it'll break you out, you know, once you hit 35% health, so you have a chance of, of doing something. Then we have, after swapping weapons ten times, your next attack will overpower and deal 60% increased overpower damage. We have Edge Master's Aspect. Skills deal up to 15% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit when you have full primary resource. We have Aspect of Unrelenting Fury. Killing an enemy with a core skill refunds 10% of its base fury cost. And then we have Aspect of Echoing Fury. Your shout skills generate 2 to 4 fury per second while active. We then have Rapid Wolf's Bite. Basic skills gain 15% attack speed. We have Aspect of Berserk Ripping. Whenever you deal direct damage while berserking, inflict 20% of the base damage dealt as additional bleeding damage over 5 seconds. And then we have Aspect of Ancestral Force. Hammer of the Ancients quakes outward, dealing 64% of its damage to enemies. You want this on your weapon because the normal Aspect would only do like 32% damage and it'll actually double it and get you closer to that normal amount of damage. When it comes to Aspect of Berserk Ripping, this one has potential to be on a two-handed weapon. However, we don't have a lo whole lot of access to Berserking. We do have some of it, but it's going to be based around our Warcry. So, you know, we're not going to be able to uh, be Berserking all the time. And then, after that, let's go ahead and hop on to the expertise that we're using. I'm gonna, currently using two-handed mace up to a 7% chance to gain 2 fury when hitting an enemy, double the amount of fury gained while berserking. The main reason why I use this is because Hoda is going to have a very high fury cost with this build, so fury generation is pretty good. However, using things like two-handed sword expertise isn't too bad. This will fall off later just because we don't particularly stack bleed damage buffs, but and then the two hand and then if you once you get access to consistent vulnerability, two-handed axe expertise could be pretty good as well. There's actually a lot of options, but for right now I'm just using the two-handed mace expertise. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hop into the full skill tree. I'm just going to bring this over here so you can see what that's going to look like at max level. So Frenzy, Enhanced Frenzy, Combat Frenzy, this is to give you a bunch of damage reduction. And that's really the main thing is damage reduction is really, really good. If you do not have the legendary for Hammer of the Ancients, take Upheaval. Otherwise, take Hammer of the Ancients, take Enhanced Hammer of the Ancients, and then take Furious Hammer of the Ancients. The reason why you would want to take Upheaval over Hoda is because this has a really small range, whereas this has a really big radius, and early on they do pretty similar amounts of damage. So, uh, that being said, you know, obviously Hoda is going to eventually do more because of this passive but it's going to be, functionally speaking, a little bit harder to use than Upheaval. And Upheaval has a decent amount of range, so you'll be able to hit things from a range with Upheaval, which will help you deal with things like Ice Clan Shamans and stuff like that. But once you actually have the uh, the Legendary for this, it makes the radius on this a lot better. It's still not quite, it's still not going to be quite the range of Upheaval, but it'll be better. So, next, next up we have Rallying Cry, Enhanced Rallying Cry, Tactical Rallying Cry, this is going to give you access to Unstoppable. It's also going to give you a bunch of Fury Generation and Movement Speed. Challenging Shout, Enhanced Challenging Shout, Tactical Challenging Shout. This is going to give you access to Damage Reduction, more Max Life while it's active, 
and you're going to gain three, th 3 fury each time you take damage. It's a great defensive ability. You're going to take War Cry for increased damage. It also gives you Berserking, and then it's also going to grant you 15% of your base life as Fortify. Keep on coming down. You're going to take Call of the Ancients. You're going to take Prime Call of the Ancients. You're going to take Supreme Call of the Ancients. And then we're going to take Unbridled Rage. It's going to make your core skills cost 100% more Fury, but it's going to make it do 135% increased damage. So that's a lot of damage. It's pretty good. And you're going to be wanting to use it at full Fury anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. And it's going to give your one-shot potential a whole lot more. So after you get the abilities, and there's going to be a point where you're going to have extra skill points. If you ever have a point where you have skill points you need to put in and you're not sure what to put it in, max out Hoda and then start looking for passives if you already have your ability and all of their uh, passives picked for, for these, right? Then just start picking up passives. So for example, pressure point, core skills have a 10% chance to make things vulnerable, imposing presence, 15% max life, martial vigor, damage reduction against the least is, elites is increased by 9%, we have Booming Voice, Shout Skill Effect Durations increased by 24%. We have Swiftness, Movement Speeds increased by 12%. We have Quick Impulses, reduce the duration of control impairing effects by 18%. So that's going to help with CC. And I, always, and I opt for more defense over damage while leveling as a barb because leveling as a barb is tough. So just making yourself as tanky as possible is going to be pretty good. We have Thick Skin. We have Counter Offensive. While you're fortified, you deal 12% increased damage. Defensive stance increases how much damage reduction you get from Fortify by 6%. Then we have Pit Fighter, you deal 9% increased damage to close enemies and get 6% distant damage reduction. And then coming down to here, we have Wall Up, Bludgeoning Skills deal 15% increased damage to enemies stunned. We proc the Wall Up with Concussion. Skills using Bludgeoning Weapons have up to a 30% chance to stun enemies for 3 seconds or up to a 45% chance when using a two-handed Bludgeoning Weapon. So you'll be stunning things a lot. And then we have Brute Force. Your overpowers deal 45% increased damage when using a two-handed weapon. Because we have the legendary aspect that guarantees us overpower, this becomes pretty good. All right, that being said, that's what the skill tree looks like all the way up until uh, level 50, Renown 10. Feel free to change anything any way you like if you have certain preferences, stuff like that. And now let's go ahead and let's get into this dungeon here. And I will show you the build and how it works. Keep in mind, leveling a Barbarian, this is going to be the hardest class to level. So making sure that you rely on the Codex is going to be a very, very key way of easing the pain of this build. Uh, or, well, sorry, not of the build, but of, but of the Barbarian and just her leveling. Because you can see I'm just, I'm just one-shotting things. You can see the Hoda is quaking. Doing its quake outward. Boom. Boom. And just to show you, I'll take this off here real fast. And look at the range. See, you see the range, the, the range difference here. And then, so we got boom. And then you put this back on, and then you're actually going to have a, a much better range. Then instead, you're going to have something more like this, where it's like bam. Now, upheaval is also pretty solid. I'll go ahead and I will show you that real fast, just so you can see the range difference here. Just go ahead and do this. It'll show you the rain. And also there is a legend if you do prefer if you do prefer upheaval, keep in mind that there is a legendary power for it, but you can see it has some decent range. So see this like dude that's being pesky and he's trying to hit me? Alright, bam. See you have it's not like you know it's not like you're a sorcerer, but you have distance when you have upheaval. You have a way of just kind of targeting people to kill them, which is really nice. And then there's a legendary aspect in the Codex of Power that whenever you use upheaval it causes your one of your Call of the Ancient guys to pop out and also use an upheaval. It's like 40% of the time. So yeah. 
Oh. oh. There we go. All right. Back to using the Hoda, but overall Hoda is going to do more damage just because of its passive. It's going to make that multiplier a little bit more. So let's go ahead and keep on keeping on here. Bam. Just kind of chunking these elites. And remember, as that's not what we want to do. So, and remember, as you're finding legendaries and stuff, this is just a general guide. You definitely, definitely want to adjust it as you find legendaries and drops if you do find any. Because there are going to be some legendaries that are probably build worthy to build around. And then here I'll show you the oh, Call of the Ancients. They kind of just come in and start wrecking things. Okay, I guess that guy's just going to spin in place for a little while. Bam. And Frenzy has a decent amount of single target DPS just because you build up the, all that attack speed. And we took the rapid aspect. So you have a decent amount of attack speed with it. But it's also going to help you build up your uh, fury generation whatnot. Okay. Keep it moving. Hmm. And even with, you know, a build put together, you know, not all your your problems on Barb are ever gonna go away. Barb does just have one of the worst leveling experiences. Granted, it's doable. Obviously, people are hitting max level. It's just, it's not like a rogue or, you know, a sorcerer or like a necro or something like that. Can't really say druid because druids, druids isn't as bad as barb, especially if you like specifically go like companion stuff. I think the companion stuff's really good early on, like really good, because the uh, base damage on all of it is just so high. going here. Right, let's see if uh let's see if this yeah okay now the guy's actually whirlwinding. Yeah, but you can see they just kinda come in wreck face. Oh that's not what we want. Alright. You don't need no shrines. I'm just kidding using shrines is actually super helpful typically. <laughs> Alright, let's come up here it up to this cap. I kind of just want to group everything together so I can try to hit it all with the Hota. Go ahead, pop our challenging shout to give us a nice burst of health. And you can see that we're fortified. You know, we got 3904 of 506. So we are we are getting our fortify up there. And we are, you know, fortified for over 50% of our max life. So we are getting what we need for that passive because you swap weapons all the time so like it sounds like swapping six times is a lot but you know but functionally speaking it's not too it's not too bad all right keep on going and I know some people are leveling whirlwind but eh, I wasn't really too big of a fan of that because mainly because Whirlwind takes kind of a few pieces to really get rolling properly, so you're really just relying on Call of the Ancients to kind of carry you while you're leveling as a Whirlwind build. Whereas I feel like with Hoda, you can see I have a little bit more say in what's going on here. So I had a couple friends that leveled as Whirlwind and they said it wasn't really the best experience. I like to be able to do stuff, I guess, but... That's okay. Bam. And like I said, a people's pretty good too. I actually, to be honest with you, I like a people a little bit more than Hoda, but Hoda does more damage, unfortunately. So I, so I run Hoda. But I was using a people early on, especially because I was doing. I think I was just running some Mercy's Reach or something like that, Fractured Peaks, in the in the early levels of this guy before I had a build or anything together, any legendaries. 
And it really helped out a lot because there was a lot of frozen in there. So being able to deal with all those cold enemies from range was like really nice. It was really nice. Okay. Not ready keeping yet. on, keeping on. So you can see we're dealing with elites pretty easily and whatnot. And let's go ahead and do the boss. I think the Call of the Ancients really helps, specifically on bosses. Like, look at that. Like, I, like, don't get me wrong, I'm chunking them every time I hit, but those Call of the Ancients, they will do. You get all three of those people onto a boss and good things happen. Real good things happen. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, there it is. Alright, so yeah, you can see uh, this is the Hoda Barbarian Guide. I hope this helps you. hope this helps, you know, alleviate some of the pain that barbarians bring you. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys next time.